Hi guys, in this lesson, I'm gonna cover AWS Control Tower. So Control Tower is an extension to AWS organizations. It sits over the top of organizations and provides you some additional control. So with Control Tower, you create something called a landing zone. A landing zone is a well-architected multi-account baseline that's based on AWS best practices. So an organization will be created if you don't have one already. In that organization, you have your root OU, and that OU will have your management account in it. As part of the landing zone, Control Tower will also set up a series of organizational units and accounts. It will create the security OU, the sandbox OU, and the production OU. And you have some control over which ones are created during the setup wizard. Within the security OU, you have the audit and log archive accounts. So the audit account will gather the auditing information that Control Tower provides, and the log archive account is where you can consolidate logs from all of the accounts within registered OUs within your landing zone. The sandbox OU is empty by default, but this is where you can create things like your dev test accounts. The production OU also is empty by default, but you can add here your production accounts. Control Tower integrates with single sign-on. The directory sources for single sign-on can be AWS SSO directories themselves, and that's the default, SAML 2.0 identity providers, or Microsoft Active Directory. Control Tower creates a series of preventive guardrails. These are essentially service control policies that will disallow certain API actions. Now, you can think of this as similar to managed policies within IAM. Essentially, Control Tower is creating a series of managed SCPs for you that are pre-configured a certain way for certain purposes. And you'll see those in the Control Tower console in the next lesson. Control Tower also creates what are called detective guardrails. These are used for governance and compliance, and they're based on AWS Lambda functions and AWS config rules. So let's just summarize Control Tower. Control Tower creates a well-architected multi-account baseline based on AWS best practices, and that's known as a landing zone. Guardrails are used for governance and compliance, and firstly, you have preventive guardrails, those are based on service control policies and they're there to disallow API actions. Secondly, you have detective guardrails. Those are implemented using AWS config rules and Lambda functions and they're there to monitor and govern compliance within the landing zone. Now the last point here is that the root user in the management account can perform actions that guardrails would disallow. So this is the same concept as with AWS organizations where the SCPs cannot affect the root user in the management account. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you the process for setting up a landing zone using AWS Control Tower. I'm logged into my account and I'm on the Control Tower homepage. And what I'm gonna do here is click on set up landing zone. So remember when we create our configuration in Control Tower, it's known as a landing zone. And that's the number of accounts and configurations that are applied. At the top of the page here, AWS let you know what to expect when you set up Control Tower. Essentially Control Tower is going to have the ability to govern your resources across accounts and organizational units, but it's not going to take control of everything by default. So you can extend that governance afterwards. So let's scroll down a bit. Now, firstly, we need to define our home region. I'll leave mine on US East North Virginia. The region deny setting can prohibit access to services based on your configuration. So if you enable that, then you can define which regions you want to actually control and the preventive guardrails you want to use. I'm gonna leave that one as not enabled. You can also select additional regions now for governance. So initially, it's just gonna be US East North Virginia. That's my home region. And if I want to, I can add regions in here. I won't add any at the moment. Let's click on next. Next, we can define the organizational unit structure. The foundational OU, which is called security in this example, is where we're actually gonna have two shared accounts. That'll be the log archive account and the security audit account. 
Then you could also create an additional OU if you wish to. This one's called Sandbox, and you can create an account in there after setup, which you can then use for any kind of dev test workloads. Let's just leave the defaults, and I'm gonna click on Next. On the third step of the wizard, we can configure the shared accounts and encryption settings. Now we don't have anything to change for the management account that will be this account that I'm logged in with. We then have the log archive account and the audit account. In both cases, we can change the account name if we want to, or just allow the default option here. I'm gonna leave those as the defaults. And then we need to give a email address and those need to be unique. So you'll need two different email addresses here for these two accounts. You can enable encryption settings if you wish to. I'm gonna leave that off and just click on next. So this is the last page and essentially here you're just confirming the information that's been supplied and you just need to check this box to confirm that Control Tower will be granted permissions to access your resources and enforce rules. And then you click on set up landing zone. Now I'm not gonna set up this particular landing zone what I've done is I've already set it up in another account and that is ready to view. I've switched over to a different account where I've already set up AWS Control Tower. So once your Control Tower configuration, your landing zone has been created, you'll see this message confirming what's happened. So two organizational units have been created, three shared accounts, a native cloud directory with pre-configured groups and single sign-on access, and 20 preventive guardrails to enforce policies and two detective guardrails to detect configuration violations. So that's been set up. So if we just look over the structure, if I go to organizational units here, now I've got a couple of test OUs at the bottom here that I've created before, but the security, the sandbox and the root are all related to AWS Control Tower. If we click on Account Factory, here we can see the VPC configuration options that are available for users when they provision new accounts. So what this is, is it defines what is allowed to be created in a VPC uh, that's controlled by Control Tower. So we can choose to enable internet accessible subnets, that's disabled by default, the number of private subnets they're allowed to have, and so on. Now I've only got the one region that's actually enabled at this stage. So you can see the others are all grayed out. Here you can also enroll accounts. So you can either enroll accounts that already exist and bring them under the control of Control Tower, or you can create a new account. So if you want to register a new account, you simply need to enter a new email address and fill out all this information. Click on Enroll Account, and it's gonna create that account for you. Under Guardrails, we can see the guardrails that are there to enforce governance over our account. So you'll see lots of existing guardrails. Now many of these will not be in operation. We can see some are mandatory, some are elective and so on. And you can see there's a few different pages worth of guardrails here. Under users and access we can see federated access management is enabled using AWS single sign-on and you can see the portal URL here. So we have SSO set up and user identity management is also using the SSO directory itself. Under shared accounts, we can see our management, log archive, and audit accounts. And if you click on any one of those, you can then see a bit more information about it. So for example, there's a CloudFormation stack set related to this configuration. Under landing zone settings, we can see some configuration information for the landing zone. Now, if you click on modify settings here, this is where we can choose to change our mind about that region deny setting. If we wanted to enable it, we can do so here. If we expand additional AWS regions for governance, we can now select the additional regions we might want to protect using AWS Control Tower. I'm just going to cancel out of there. Lastly, under Marketplace for Control Tower, you'll see that there is a marketplace here with various solutions that you can actually use with AWS Control Tower. Let's just go back up to organizational units now. And what I'm gonna do is choose one of these OUs. Let's just choose the security one. Because I wanna show you a little bit about how we can see some information such as compliance here, the state, the amount of accounts that are governed that are in this OU. You can also see the SCPs, the service control policies that are applied as well. You can see any non-compliant resources. So this is all related back to governance. 
You can see any nested OUs, used are none in this circumstance. And then you can see the accounts that are within that OU. So this is where we have the audit and the log archive accounts. And then you can see the enabled guardrails. So there's quite a few guardrails that are enabled by default. And that's it for this video. We've set up a landing zone and I've shown you around some of the basic configuration settings of your landing zone. And of course, if you have set it up in your account, then it's a good opportunity to play around it a bit further and really understand how it all works.